Hi, it's Kyle from Bytewing Games, and today we're going to be looking at my top 10 board games for beginners. Now, before we jump into the list, just a few things. There's a lot of people who are used to the traditional games of Clue and Monopoly and Risk, but there's a lot of other games out there. I think the biggest mistake you could make when introducing someone to the world of board games is to introduce them to a game that's too complicated or too lengthy and turns them off and think, I just don't really like board games. So when I'm looking at board games for this list, I thought, the game needs to be fun. Obvious, right? But the three things that I'm looking for is, number one, accessibility. You can't take 20 minutes to teach someone a new game. They're just going to be overwhelmed and think, if it takes 20 minutes to learn, how long is it going to take to play? Number two, the game needs to have meaningful decisions. It's not fun to have a game where either the game is telling you what to do and giving you obvious choices, or the player next to you is telling you exactly what to do. Number three, the game needs to have memorable moments. Those can come from unique mechanisms or themes of the game. They can come from memorable player interactions. So those are the three things I was looking at when I created the games, this list. Uh, enough theoretical chit chat, let's jump straight into the list. Coming in at number 10 is Majesty for the Realm. Majesty is one of the most underrated games that I know. It's extremely fun, and I said you don't want to take 20 minutes to teach a game. You can teach and play this game in about 20 to 30 minutes. On your turn, you're simply going to take a card and place it in front of you and score points based off of that card. And there are still meaningful decisions. Don't let the simplicity trick you. This game is extremely phenomenal, extremely accessible, and I think a very good game for beginners. Number nine, Pandemic. Pandemic is a cooperative game. You are working together to stop a deadly disease from killing all mankind, womankind, humankind. The one thing about this game is since you are working as a team, it's really good for new players because there's no secret information. You can share all of your information and make decisions as a team. That being said, you do have to be a little bit careful because it is easy for one player to say, this is the best decision, you need to do this. And that doesn't make the game fun. So Pandemic can be really good for new players. It's a great cooperative game. Just be careful of someone who tries to quarterback and tell everyone what to do. Number eight is Wavelength. Now Wavelength is a party game and I was a little hesitant to put a party game on this list of board games for beginners, but hear me out. In Wavelength, you're going to split into two teams and you'll have a clue giver trying to get players to guess a certain area on this dial that twists around. And I know it sounds a lot like a traditional party clue giving game, but what I really love about Wavelength is that it has changing clue givers, so no one's stuck being the clue giver for the whole game. You just do it for one turn and then everyone else gets a chance. I also love that the game has this dial and kind of a, a board or table presence to it. I feel like it gets players used to something on the table other than just a deck of cards or a list of clues that you're giving to each other. There's something actually there that they're twisting, they're moving, and it introduces people into something you're doing rather than just having a set of cards. Number seven is Bonanza. If I'm looking for a strategy game for the whole family, Bonanza is my go-to game. It plays up to seven players, which is great for larger groups. As a bean farmer, you are planting and collecting these beans. The more of, a, of certain types of beans you collect, the more points you earn. The unique thing about the game is that you can't rearrange your hand. So whatever order they come in, you have to lay in that order. But you only have two bean fields. And so the way that you work around that is by negotiation. This isn't a quiet game. This isn't a game where everyone's just staring at their cards, not talking to each other. You're going to be spending the majority of the game wheeling and dealing, trying to get the best deal for these beans that you want to collect. The game is a lot of fun. It's a very interactive game, and I think it's one that's great for families. Number six, Carcassonne. I'll be honest, this isn't my very favorite game. However, I think it's a great introductory game to play people who are just learning board games. It teaches a lot of unique concepts you will be creating the board yourself. So you have tiles and you're going to connect roads to roads and cities to cities, and you're, you're creating this sprawling landscape. You will place these meeple on the board, claiming stake on roads and on cities. And what's so fun and unique about the game is that you are able to connect roads and connect cities together. So even if you're not connected at one point, you can lay certain tiles and become connected. 
it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of player interaction as you try to join other people's cities and get in on their points or block other people from joining your city so that they don't get all your points. A very interactive game that teaches unique mechanisms. Number five, Splendor. This game is certainly a crowd pleaser. Almost everyone that plays this game loves it. In Splendor, you are collecting gems and you're trying to collect certain sets of gems to purchase cards and then whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. It's a very simple game, but it also has a lot of fun decision making, player interaction as you're taking gems and cards from other players who may want them. Um, a lot of fun. Number four, King Domino. This game has tiles that look just like dominoes with the two sides to them. Each turn you will take a tile and add it to your kingdom, with, with the tiles having to match an existing tile already in your kingdom. What's so fun to me about this game is that each turn you will be drafting or choosing which tile you get. However, if you choose the best tile this turn, that means you'll be the last to select a tile for next round. Talk about meaningful decisions. Do you want to take the best tile now and probably get the worst tile next round? Or do you take a kind of a bad tile this turn to hope to get the first choice for next round and get the best tile? The game is easy to learn and has a great strategy, all packaged in a 15 minute game. Number three, Between Two Cities. This is easily my most played game. My family has played it dozens of times because everyone in my family, whether or not they love board games, can easily understand and access this game. Like some of the other games we've mentioned, you will be creating a grid out of tiles. So each player will have a set of tiles and they will select two. You're working with your neighbor on either side of you. With the two tiles, you will place one tile in each of these cities. So between the two of you, you're building a city on e either side of you. At the end of the game, you score based off of your lower city. So it's a very interesting thing where you want to help both cities equally so that your lower city is still the highest scoring city. It's a very fun and unique thing. And the tile scoring is very easy. There's just six different types of tiles that score differently and an excellent cheat sheet that shows everyone how to play the game. It plays in about 20 minutes and like I said, is easy for everyone to understand, but still has great strategy and is a lot of fun. Number two, Azul. This game checks off all three of my boxes for board games for beginners. It's accessible. It's quick and easy to learn. It is full of meaningful decisions. Throughout the game, you will be selecting tiles from center draw piles. The tiles that you select will go onto your player board, but it also has some player interaction, my, my third checkbox, in that the tiles that I take will put other tiles into the center of the board in a new draw pile. So I not only have to look at what tiles am I taking, but what tiles am I making available for other players for them to take? Because I don't want to give them too many good tiles to take. And so there's a lot of fun player interaction and a lot of meaningful decisions as you're deciding which tiles to take, where to play them, and how to best maximize the number of your points. This game is a little bit more puzzly. It is a little bit more of a brain teaser than some of the other games. So it may not be for everyone, but I still think most players really enjoy this game. There are three versions of Azul. I would stick with the original, especially at first. Um, and we also have a blog post all about that. I'll link that in the comments below. Number one, Ticket to Ride. I did an online poll and I asked a group, what's the number one game you would teach people who are just entering the hobby of board games? Easily the, the winner was Ticket to Ride. In this game, you are creating routes across a country and you are gathering cards, you're laying the trains down, but only one player can take a certain route. And so there's a fine balance of how long do you collect cards and how soon do you lay your tracks down. If you collect cards for too long, someone may steal your track. But if you lay too early, you may reveal where you're going and other players will jump in and swipe the spots that you're trying to get. That tension is a lot of fun and, and creates a lot of meaningful decisions and a very fun interaction with other players. And those are my top 10 games that I would recommend for beginners. I've created short five to six minute reviews for many of these games. Look in the comments below if you're interested in learning more about any of these. I would love to hear what games you think are best for beginners as they're learning this hobby of board games. Let me know in the comments below. Until next time.